Hey y'all, in this video we're going to talk about circumference and arc length, and I'm going to throw in a little bit about pi. Now the key word for this video, key concept, is going to be circumference. Now when I ask people, hey, what do you know about circumference? Most people throw out a formula. Hey, oh, circumference is 2 r pi. Our circumference is d pi, right? Um, but really, fundamentally, and most importantly, circumference is the distance around a circle, right? It's what we think of as like the perimeter of the circle. And yes, there are two formulas that are often used to find circumference, and uh, you get taught them sometimes directly just, hey, here's the formula, use it, find some circumferences. Um, and they are c equals 2r pi and c equals d pi. And remember, these are lengths and distances, so when you find circumference, put appropriate units, please. Now, I put a little asterisk around this one because this is kind of like the fundamental relationship. This kind of like started it all. Now, when people first learn about pi, especially little kids, it becomes their favorite number because there's like a mysticism around pi, right? It's, uh, it's got these special traits and properties that make it really cool. But fundamentally, by definition, and for thousands of years, pi has just been the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle, okay? That's all it is. Find the circumference, divide it by the diameter, you have the number pi. True about every circle. Now, every major civilization that we know of knew that pi was existing, that it was a little more than three, and they had a variety of different uh, approximations that they used. We now use either 3.14 or 3.14159 uh, as approximations, but these are all just approximations, okay? Pi itself is considered a transcendental number, which is one of the things that makes it fancy and fun. Now, a transcendental number is an irrational number, and to remember what an irrational number is, it is a number whose decimal representation never ends and never repeats. So it's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, okay? And transcendental numbers are not algebraic, meaning pi is not considered an algebraic number. And an algebraic number is a number that is a solution to a polynomial equation with integer coefficients. So basically, like the square roots, the cube roots, the fourth roots, those are examples of algebraic irrational numbers. So the example I have is the square root of two. This is an algebraic irrational number. It's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, but it is created by, the for, uh, by this equation, x squared equals two. The square root of two is a solution to this equation, and that's what makes it algebraic. Pi, on the other hand, you cannot create a polynomial equation with integer coefficients that has an answer that's pi. That's what makes it transcendental. Now I can make an entire like series of videos on all the cool things about pi and how it's used and how it's studied uh, and different ways of finding approximations of it, but we're going to stick with the practical things we need for geometry in this video. And the thing we need most is this reminder, okay? That pi and other commonly used irrational numbers like the square roots of two, square roots of three, square roots of five, they use symbols to represent their exact values, okay? So if I want the exact value, the symbol pi has to be in there. If I'm dealing with radicals, right, the square root of two is the exact value of that quantity. This symbol, Greek letter pi, is the exact value of the ratio of a circumference to a diameter of a circle, okay? So when I do calculations, if I know the radius is 4, I use my trusty circumference formula, I get 8 pi. This 8 pi is the exact value of that circumference, the exact length, okay? And I don't care how many decimal places you use. You can have a decimal representation of pi that has 10 billion digits. And if you use that for your calculations, it is still an approximation and it is still a rounded value, okay? The only way to get the exact value is to use the symbol pi. Now we default to pi, the symbol, the exact value. A rule of thumb is use the exact value as long as possible in calculations that are gonna require an approximation later on. So when we do real world 
problems, you know, involving areas of circles, involving circumferences of circles, volumes of like columns that are cylindrical, cones, spheres, surface area spheres. You are going to use pi in your calculations throughout the entire problem until the very end. Never, ever, ever round early and then do more calculations later on because every single calculation you do on the rounded value adds error into your answer. So in order to avoid error, we do exact values as long as possible. So now let's actually go to the conjecture for circumference. It is C66, the circumference conjecture, and it's really the definition of pi. It says if C is the circumference and D is the diameter of a circle, then there is a number pi such that C equals D pi. And then we have the alternate, uh, if D equals 2R when we're given the radius R, then the relationship between uh, pi, the radius, and the circumference is C equals 2R pi. So now it's time to talk about arc length. Now arc length is a relatively simple concept. It is just a portion or a fraction of the circumference of a circle. Uh, I need you to note that in geometry, we are going to use the word arc length exclusively for just circles. So arc length is going to be a portion of a circle. Generally speaking in mathematics though, arc length is actually a generic term. Um, and it is just the distance between two points along any curve. So it doesn't have to be a circle, it could be a spiral, it could be something wavy, it could be a parabola. Um, however, in order to find those arc lengths, you kind of have to know calculus. So we're going to avoid that and stick with the circle definition of arc length. Now I'm going to give you a warning, okay? The most common thing that's messed up with arc length isn't like the concept of, of arc length. It has to do with primarily the notation and when you have to give a length versus when you have to give a measure. Okay, remember arc length is a distant distance. Arc measure is the degree of the central angle. And when I go over the formulas and do the calculations, pay very close attention to the notation that I use for measure versus the notation that I use for length. And one of the reasons why it's easy to confuse arc measure and arc length is because you really have to know the arc measure to find an arc length, okay? Now I have drawn circle Q here and I'm calling it a unit circle, meaning this circle has a radius of one unit. And in this case, I'm gonna use a, a meter. So the radius of the circle Q is one meter. And I have three points along the circle that have been labeled A, B, and C. And so um, this C, since it's C equals, it doesn't mean that point, it means circumference, right? And so I know that the circumference of a circle is the diameter times pi. And if my radius is one unit uh, or one meter, then I know that my circumference is two pi meters, all right? So I know this is true for my circle. Okay, so the circumference, shrimp, distance around is two pi. So now I want to know the measure of ABC. Well, since AC goes through Q, I know AC is a diameter. Therefore, ABC, that arc, is a semicircle, right? And so I know the measure of this semicircle, this arc, the measure of this arc, that's measure of arc ABC, is the central angle used to create that arc or cut that arc, and that's 180 degrees. Now, the length of ABC is quite simple. Right, I want to know the length of that semicircle, right? And it's just half that circle. So it is just uh, pi meters, right? It's half that circle. Now let's look at BC, right? Arc BC. The measure of arc BC is 45 degrees, okay? And so if I want to know the length of this arc or this piece of the circle, right, I have to know what fraction of a circle this is. And so I can simply take the measure, which is 45 degrees, and I have to figure out what part of the circle 45 degrees is. So I create the ratio, 45 over 360, right? And then I multiply that. This is the fraction I need. This is the fraction of the circle that is BC, that arc. And so if I multiply this, by the circumference, two pi, 
I will get the length of that arc. And so if I want to go ahead and do the calculations, 45 over 360 is the fraction 1 eighth. So it's 1 eighth of 2 pi or pi over 4 meters. Now when it comes to notation, measure is always going to be the same. If I want the measure of an arc, I always put that M in front of it. Measure, and then I give the symbol for the arc. Okay, and it always means measure when I have that M. Now, some references will tell you to put a cursive L in front of the arc name for arc length, but that's not used very often. And sometimes when it's used, the L actually doesn't look like an L. They kind of make it look like squished, so it looks more like an E. Um, and so I haven't seen this version very much. Um, I see a lot of places, a lot of questions where they'll actually straight up ask you, hey, find the arc length. Um, but I don't see that L very often. More often, I will see no symbol used at all in front of the arc. So oftentimes if you see just the arc by itself, no M, no letter in front of it, that usually means length. The thing you have to remember though, that since these are going to vary depending on, you know, the textbook author or the question writer, everybody puts the M in front for arc measure. Okay. So if you're, if you have a question between, hey, is this the measure or is this the length? That M is always going to be there for measure. So of course we are going to end with the arc length conjecture C67 that says the length of an arc is equal to the circumference multiplied by the measure of the central angle divided by 360. That's just a fancy way of find, saying, hey, find the fraction of the circumference that that uh, arc is and then multiply that by circumference. Now I did write down a formula for it and Grogu is covering up the most important part. Let's move him out of the way here. Okay, so arc length equals, and it looks like a zero with a line through it, over 360 times C. That zero with a line through it is the Greek letter theta. Okay, and notice it's a horizontal line, not a slanty line. The zero with the slanty line like that, this means the null set. You use that in algebra one, right? This is zero with the horizontal line through it. That is the Greek letter theta, and you're going to see it more often from now on because theta is the go-to variable to represent an angle in some sort of equation or formula. So when you see a theta, that usually means some angle. So this means theta represents that central angle that is the measure of that arc. Okay. Now, of course, we have an alternate formula which is how I always remember it, right? It's arc length is the arc measure divided by 360 times the circumference. Um, relatively simple concepts, but remember, we have a bunch of chord tangent inscribed angle conjectures that I can throw in to problems about finding arc length. So be prepared. Make sure you remember the notation and you remember those previous conjectures, y'all. Good luck.